Mary. Poppins, you came back. You seem hardly to have aged at all. Really? One never discusses a woman's age, Michael. Would have hoped I taught you better. I mean, I don't think one ever has a total vision on day one. But you have a feeling, you have an idea. Um, and I don't know when day one was, or whether day one was the day that Rob um, asked me to go meet him to talk about it, or whether it was sort of a few months later when it was officially starting work day one. But I guess between that time, things start sort of like floating around in your mind. And I had a couple of visions. And the first one was sort of vaguely Mary Poppins silhouette, but I hadn't really figured out how to do it. But I knew that I had to um, refer to the original one in, in some form or other. Um, but my first real vision really was for the for the uh, costumes for the animated sequence. Really, it was the very first thing I started work on, knowing that it was going to be a process that would be ongoing and, and take quite a while. And also what I wanted to do was experimental, which was make the live action characters look as if they were wearing clothes that had been painted by the animators. So to, to bring them into the animated world as opposed to have them look separate from it. So I started by experimenting with that, with, with making clothes out of calico and canvas, just anything, any shapes really, and then, and then got my, my painting team to start painting in different styles, having spoken to the animators and, and asked to see um, examples of the kind of animation they were going to do. So I wanted to see the, the, how they were treating the paint and how they were treating the color. Because it's a musical and we have dance sequences, you have to bear that in mind. And so you're making costumes for dancers to be danced in. Um, I do have experience with dancers. I've worked with dancers in the theatre quite a lot. This is my first um, musical, though, um, and it's my first experience of working with dancers on film. It's not that much different. It's the same. So, yes, you have to make clothes that are going to be movable or that, that actors or, or, or dancers can actually move in without any difficulty. So, I mean, for the Learys, for example, I mean, everything was designed for them to move and we tested everything out. We had like a couple of guys in, dancers in, who, who tested every single thing that we made just to make sure they could do all the moves in them and the pants wouldn't split. But for, for, for characters like Mary Poppins, when she has her dance number within that, within the big, the big number, um, Rob gave me the brief. Rob said, well, I don't care how you do it, but she has to look like Ginger Rogers. And so her look, which is sort of quite lean and elegant, quite narrow, I had to put a lot more volume into the skirt for the dance number. I mean, normally what happens is we meet, and in that first meeting, I might have found few different options of things to try out. We just play with clothes to begin with. So I had different kinds of things for her. And my idea was that she was a bohemian artistic type. And I was looking, I was inspired really by early 20th century, like 20s deco pajama suits and like harem pants and pajama suits and just a bohemian artistic look, really. I really wanted her to not have any hair, actually. I actually wanted her to have the turban and all the hair hidden inside the turban. But she really wanted to have some hair and then she really wanted to have orange hair. Oh, super kind of fabulous, it gets me even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. Of course, I knew the original one because it was the first film I ever saw and it's one of those things that's ingrained in your memory, you know, you, you realize that you know all the words to all of the songs and there are certain visuals that stick with you. So I had that already, but I did watch it just the once. At the very beginning, I watched it once and I didn't, I didn't want it to guide me too much, but I wanted to play homage to it. I think you have to, you know, we had to take it into consideration because it's about the same character who doesn't age. So I watched it and I think when I watch what we've done with, Mary Poppins Returns, I can see all the little influences that happen. And maybe some of it was um, unconscious and subliminal, you know, sort of things that sort of made me think of ways of doing the characters in, in the new one. You're so beautiful. Stop it. I, you mock me. If I were a man, I would ravish you. <laughs> you have become close to Abigail. She is a viper. You're jealous. You must send Abigail away. I do not want to. They couldn't be more different. The favorite and Mary Poppins could not be more different. And, when I, and I had challenges on both and they were completely different. So it was very interesting. I mean, well, they're similar in that they both uh, have a lot of costumes in them and, and they were all made from scratch. Everything in the favorite was made from scratch as was pretty much everything in Mary Poppins, apart from some crowd scenes. Um, I actually worked on them both simultaneously. 
And in a way, it really helped that they were poles apart for me to be able to sort of keep two sides of my brain separate. You know, I had the favorite going on here and Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins full color over here, the favorite monochrome over there. I mean, Mary Poppins team was enormous because it was a much, much bigger film and it went on for a long, you know, several months. It went on for eight or nine months. And the favorite was much smaller, even though we made, uh, we built many costumes. It was, a, it was a smaller, I mean, I suppose full-time people in Mary Poppins would have been at least 50 and then the numbers growing depending on what we were doing. And the favorite, perhaps um, somewhere between 10 and 15, 